Hi everyone, I'm Wyatt and welcome back to part 2 of the Arrays and For Loops video. We'll be getting into that calculator class that I mentioned in the last video, and it should be a lot of review from the previous video and previous videos actually, but there will be a couple of new topics as well that so we can learn about so we can maximize our usage of arrays. Let's create our calculator class. We'll create a new file called calculator.java and start off as usual by writing public class calculator. Now let's create a method to divide all, all of those numbers by a given divisor. To do this we'll start off by writing public because this is a public method, but this time we'll follow it with static. Static indicates that we can run this method without having to create a new calculator object. What that means is we can just write calculator.divideAll instead of having to create a new calculator and then call the divideAll method on that newly created calculator. Next, we have to give the return type of the method. Our method will return a double array containing all of the numbers divided by the given divisor. In Java, a double, unlike an integer, can have decimal places, so that's why we'll be using it in this case, since we want to dif differentiate 0 divided by 3 from 1 divided by 3. But if we were to just use an integer array, both of those would give us 0. Next, we'll name the method and give it parameters. We'll take an integer array containing the numbers to be divided, as well as an integer divisor that we will use to divide all of these integers. Next, let's create an array to contain the results of this method. We want this to be a double array since it will require decimal places, and we'll call it results. We'll create a new double array, but we don't know how long we want it to be. That depends on the length of numbers. So to get the length of the numbers array, we can simply write numbers.length. Now the results of what array will, equal, will be the same length as numbers.length. Next, let's create a for loop so that we can run through the elements in the numbers array. Once again, we'll start off by writing i equals 0. This time, we'll just be using i to keep track of the index of the array that we'll be using. We want this loop to run while, we, uh, while i is less than the length of the numbers array. Once again, we don't know how that long that would, might be, so that's why we'll use numbers.length. And then lastly, we'll write i++ since we want this i value to increment by 1 each time the loop runs. Now let's divide the number that we get from the numbers array by the divisor and assign it to a double called result. If we were to divide the integer number by the integer divider, in Java the, this operation would return an integer with the decimal places truncated. So before we assign this value to the result double, we have to write double in parentheses before one of the numbers that we will be dividing. Double casts this divisor to a double. So now, for example, if the divisor was 3, it will be 3.0 so that it has that decimal place so that when we do the division, it knows to return a number with decimal places. Now let's add the result to the results array. Finally, we'll return the results array. Now let's go back to the main class and call our method so that we can see it run. 
since our method returns an array, we'll first want to declare a double array to put the return value of this method into. Then we can call the method by writing calculator dot divide all and we'll use our first numbers array and divide all the numbers by three. Here numbers and three are arguments which are what we call the values that we pass into the parameters when we call a method. Now let's say we wanted to print all of the results. I'll show you a special type of for loop called the for each loop that we can use to print out each number from the results array. To do this, we'll simply write for double i in results. What this for each loop does is it runs through the results array, and each time the loop runs, I will represent the next element of the results array. So that way, all we have to do is write system.out.println i, and that will print every value from the results array. Now we can hit run and see the results of our code. All right, so if you happen to be following along with me writing exactly the same code, it looks like I made a bit of a typo here, forgot to write i, so go ahead and fill that in to avoid an error here. And now we can go ahead and run the code. And it looks like we get every number divided from 0 to 99 divided by 3. All right, that'll do it for part two of for loops and arrays. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you have a decent enough understanding of for loops and arrays so that you will be able to understand them when we use them in robot code. Thanks for watching and have a great day.